Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger. By the end of this video, you will be able to arrange the various groups of carnivorous mammals um, onto a geological time scale showing the extent of each group's fossil record. After the extinction of the dinosaurs at the end of the Cretaceous, mammals quickly diversified into larger herbivore mammals that we've previously discussed. But they also diversified into carnivorous mammals. These are mammals that have a diet that contains a larger amount of meat, principally eating other mammals. So today, uh, most carnivorous mammals belong in a single group called carnivora. But there were other prehistoric meat-eating mammals that we'll discuss in this video. To differentiate the various extinct carnivorous mammals, we just have to look at their teeth. In particular, the placement of carnassial teeth. Carnassial teeth are sharp teeth which are used for slicing meat and tendons. And they have independently evolved in each group and this independent origin explains the various groupings. Two of the major groups are the creodonts, this is an, an extinct group, and the carnivora, these are the modern carnivorous mammals. In creodonts, the carnassial teeth are composed of either the lower three molars or the lower second molar while in carnivora, the carnassial teeth is limited to the lower first molar. In addition to creodonts and carnivores, we also have the carnivorous mesonychids, which are more closely related to artiodactyls, and they appear to be like large pig-like carnivores. These meat-eating mammals had rows of carnassial teeth, which involved into crushing massive teeth late in their evolution. All right, so let's look at the earliest members of each of these three groups. In the Paleocene, the first three carnivorous mammals living in the new air after the extinction of the dinosaurs. Among the carnivora, we have Protictus, which has a large lower first molar as the sole carnassial tooth, with Creodonta, we have Tahiana, which has multiple carnassial teeth. With Mesonychidae, we have Dysicus, with a row of multiple sharp teeth that are eh, somewhat carnassial in nature, but are more uh, simple kind of scissor-like teeth. Now, all of these Paleocene carnivores are about coyote or smaller size. By the Eocene, here in North America, carnivorous mammals got larger. They got to be about the size of a wolf. The top two carnivores display carnassial teeth that involve the upper fourth premolar and the lower first molar. This is what is found in cats and dogs today. And Dimeticus and Myasis are more closely related to cats and dogs. The lower figured Eocene mammals are Hyenodon, in which the upper second, third, and fourth premolar, as well as the entire lower molars, are all carnassial teeth. This defines a group of creodont mammals called Hyenodontidae, while the Eocene mammals on the lower right in the figure is Oxyhena which is also a creodont, but exhibits a carnassial occlusion between the upper first molar and the second lower molar. This mammal is a oxyhenid creodont. The oxyhenidae creodonts were large lion-sized mammals that lived during the early Eocene, and which are well known in the American West, but are also found in Asia and in Europe. They had very short skulls that somewhat resemble the skulls of modern big cats. 
Some of the coolest oxyhenid is Patrophilus, which is known from the Middle Eocene Bridger Formation of southwestern Wyoming. It's known from some nearly complete skeletons. Living also during the early Eocene were the smaller Hyenodontidae, which unlike the oxyhenids, had multiple carnassial teeth. The hyenodontids had longer skulls and were weasel to small dog-sized mammals, some with the ability to climb trees. Um, some of the larger ones during the Middle Eocene include Sinopa and Prolimdesion. Then around 46 million years ago, the larger lion-sized oxyhenids were, went extinct. And by around 38 million years ago, the bear-sized mesonychids went extinct, which meant that during the last few million years of the Eocene, large mammal car carnivores were replaced by the hyenodontids, which went from weasel-sized mammals to large wolf-sized mammals, like the late Eocene hyenodontide creodont hyenodon. Hyenodon was the climax predator during the late Eocene and also represents one of the last of the hyenodontids to exist before their extinction at the end of the Eocene. The Eocene Oligocene boundary was important because while many carniv carnivores live through this event, the creodonts finally succumbed to extinction. The carnivora survived. These survivors would evolve into cats, dogs, bears, weasels, pinnipeds, and hyenas. Among the Eocene carnivora were a group called the Myacidae, which closely resembled small dogs or coyotes, some of which were arboreal while others were more terrestrial. The other group of Eocene carnivora were the Viveravidae, which were civet-like mammals. For many years, the Viveravidae were placed in the Filiaforma. This is a large branch that would lead to cats, while the Myacidae were placed into the Caniformia uh, as ancestors to dogs. This, the dog-cat split um, in evolution, occurred early within the group. However, more recent work has argued that the Viveravidae and Myacidae are really splits, early splits off the tree and are not ancestral to either cats or dogs and are not even grouped within carnivora. They're grouped in a larger grouping called the carnivora morphs. Now, some of the Myacidae are closely related to carnivora, like Tapasion. This is a Middle Eocene carnivorous mammal known from here in Utah. So in this new scheme, the first true carnivora are the early uh, Caniforma Hesperscion. Now, Hesperscion is from the late Eocene of Colorado, which was a fox-like carnivore. Now there's one other group that shows up at the end of the Eocene called the Nimravidae, which are known also as the false saber-tooth cats. They have many cat-like features like retractable claws and saber-like teeth. And the most well-known is Hopiophonus from the White River Formation of Colorado. These early saber-tooth cats lived at the end of the Eocene and are the sister group to the crown branch of Carnivora. We will see the evolution of saber teeth twice as later on within the cat family they will appear again. From the Oligocene to modern epics, two groups would remain. The first group, the Filiforma, includes four families, the Filidae, the cats, the Viridae, the civets, the um, Herpestidae, the mongooses, and the Hyenidae, the hyenas. True saber-toothed cats would evolve in the Pliocene and Pleistocene and are closely related to lions, panthers, and mountain lions, as well as house cats.
The most famous of the true saber-toothed cats is Smilodon, known from hundreds of skeletons from Los Angeles, from the La Brea Tar Pits locality near Hollywood. So why did long saber-toothed mammals appear to evolve multiple times? Well, one theory is that these long saber teeth were an effective tool for subduing larger prey. Like when a big cat tries to take down a larger hoofed mammal, it risks getting kicked to death or stabbed with nasty horns. So the cat goes after the vital organs in the throat, including the carotid blood vessels knocking out brain function, as well as the trachea, which quickly disrupts airflow into the lungs. A ripping out throat is one way to knock down a larger predator and hence feed the family for a longer period of time than carnivores that have to hunt smaller prey. The other group of Oligocene to modern carnivores includes the Caniforma. These include the Canid family, the modern dogs, as well as a group called the Arctodidae, which includes uh, bears, bear dogs, seals and walruses, as well as diverse Mustelidae, the skunks, raccoons, weasels, and otters. And fossils from this group are impressive. The cave bears are found across Europe from the late Pleistocene, living alongside humans in Europe during the Ice Age. Bear dogs lived during the Miocene and were large, ground-adapted bear-like mammals with massive skulls. Pinnipedae, the group that would evolve into seals and walruses have a fossil record extending into the early Miocene and are the newest group of mammals to make the shift into the marine environment as fully aquatic mammals, although they spend many hours on the coastlines. All right, so we've covered a lot of groups. So let's look at how long these meat-eating mammals lived by looking at their stratigraphic record. The Mesonicidae lived during the Paleocene and Eocene. The Credonts are really two groups. The Hyenodontidae, which lived during the Paleocene and Eocene, while the Oxyhenidae lived during the Paleocene and only the first half of the Eocene. The Myacidae and Viveravidae lived during the Paleocene and Eocene, while the saber-toothed Nimravidae appear at the end of the Eocene and lived into the Miocene. The Felidae and relatives appear at the early Oligocene and survived to the present, while the Canidae and relatives appear in the late Eocene and survive to the present. The bears, Ursula, appear during the Oligocene, while the Amphicynodon, the bear dogs, appear at the base of the Oligocene, although a recent discovery suggests a Middle Eocene origin for the group, while the Pinnipedidae, the seals and rawwuses, appear in the early Miocene. So this is the arrangement of the various groups of carnivorous mammals on a geological time scale showing the extent of each group's fossil record. I hope that you've learned something cool about meat-eating mammals in this video. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website, benjamin slash burger.org. Links are found in the description below.